I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Yes or no, did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. I had no prior knowledge of the planned assault on Nancy Kerrigan. I am deeply sorry for my irresponsible and selfish behavior I engaged in. Hey everybody, it's Oops the Podcast. I'm Francis and I'm joined as ever by Giulio Gallarati. G, how are you? What up, quarantiners? What's up, teeners, teenage dreamers? Um, (laughs) G, you are in the Hamptons. Correct. I am in rural Pennsylvania. I'm in uh, Quaker towns. Oh, really? Quaker, Quaker area. Are they like acting in accordance with all the guidelines? I'm not sure if they know. Because I know that like the Hasidic neighborhoods are getting crushed by this. Sure are. Um, but I don't know that Quakers know about any of this because they're not allowed technology. They're not allowed to have phones either? I, I could have that totally wrong. That might be the Shakers. I get the Shakers and the Quakers confused. I don't think the Shakers are a thing anymore. Are they not? Yeah, they, they, since the 70s, they've been gone. They died out in the 70s? I happen to know this because I, I just was reading some random fucking thing the other day that I, I had never heard of them. Wonder I'm not like a shaker expert. I would have thought maybe the Y2K bug would have killed them off. <laughs> Something technology related, you know? Wouldn't that be the ultimate irony? You spend your entire culture's existence avoiding technology. Next thing you know, a, a Matrix-like bug comes out and wipes out your entire community because you didn't update your iPhone software. <laughs> that would be bad, dude. Yeah. That would be bad. How we, you doing? We, I'm, uh, dude, I'm pretty well. I'm pretty well. My girlfriend cries like uh, randomly at, at really? just random moments. Yeah, starts crying. And I don't really know what it's for. Um, so it's hard to like comfort her. Mm-hmm. Uh, today she was crying a lot because um, she's got a, a group project at work and, and her, the person she's been working on it with is not holding up his end of the bargain because apparently all of his children have the virus. <laughs> what? It's the sort of thing where it's it's tough to be like, hey, buddy, fucking chip in, you know. Right. Um, but at the same time, she is the lab partner in chemistry class who was assigned the jock as a partner, <laughs> and she knows that the project they're on is going to fail, and that will look bad for her. So she's probably going to have to do all the work herself. <laughs> I expected that to be virus-related crying. Now, I guess it's like it's technically virus-related crying, but also like. You know, tell her to chill, dude. I'll tell her to chill. I'll tell her to chill. That'll probably make her cry again. They're, sh- they're, they're short squalls, little squalls, you know, right. squalls of tears. But yeah, she's, she's been crying. Um, and yesterday, uh, her stepdad, who owns the place, he came home and just to get the mail and stuff and then immediately turned around. He's a pilot. And so, dude, he's, I mean, he's been flying constantly. Oh, wow. And he's supposed to fly to San Francisco, which is a city on lockdown. Right. Like, well, where, where are you bringing these people? Right. You know? Dude, I thought you were going to say, I thought you were going to say he came home and started beating the shit out of her. Something about, no. <laughs> no. something about stepdad came home. I always expect the next thing to be, be involving beating. Uh, for me, it's, it's beating off uh, because of what I've been watching a lot lately. Stepdad comes home to find daughter, you know, uh, not practicing the piano, but practice, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. Um, <laughs> you know where I'm going. Yeah. Um, dude, so how are you doing? How are you holding up? I'm good, man. You know how I feel? I feel like, you know, when you have a crazy sexual encounter and then sure. you wake up, you wake up in the morning and you think you have an STD, but then you're like, but you don't, you, there's no, you have no symptoms. You're just like, do I have an STD? But then like by one o'clock, you're like, I'm fine. There's no chance I have an STD. Like, yeah, really, yeah. Statistically speaking, there's no way. But then you go to bed again, and you start Googling, and you start watching, and then all of a sudden you think you have it again. Like, that's how I feel. Yeah, I, I, I totally get that. Everyone, everyone has become a hypochondriac as totally. a result of this. Um, yeah, and, and absolutely, for me, that <clears throat> creeping STD feeling usually results from uh, the, the partner that I'm, I'm sleeping with, whether, you know, they're just sort of a loose a loose person, you know, looser fit. That's usually when I'm like, I didn't <laughs> figure of speech, it. everyone. Yeah, I didn't feel it go in, so I better get tested. Um, 
that's usually. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Um, um, isn't it cute that they're opening stores for seniors earlier? I just went to the grocery store and they had like a, a, a you know a golden <laughs> age hour, right? It's like <laughs> it's cute, six man. to seven a.m. on Thursdays. <laughs> Elderly people can come and shop, and I'm so glad you brought this up. What was your first thought when you saw that? Aww. <laughs> for me. <laughs> It was, I want to meet somebody who can make me a fake ID that says that I'm 60 years old. Dude, that's a terrible first thought. Because <laughs> I, I want in on these, like, quieter shopping hours. You know what it's I mean? Not, it's not, well, let me ask you this. That, that brings up a good point. Have you been to the grocery store today or yesterday? We went today, yeah. It, it was really, it was overstocked. They had everything, and it wasn't that crowded. Interesting. Uh, there were certain things that were missing, that were like totally gone. Um, like what? Uh, I think a lot of the a lot of the good soups were okay, gone. Okay, the canned stuff. Yeah, like the best soups. The only stuff they had left was like Campbell's chunky shit pile. Oh and, God! You know, you you want Mama's organic chicken noodle natural farm-raised soup but uh instead you're left with like donovan donovan mcnab commercial shit and you're like that's right, not right. dude that reminds uh, me I, I i got to the final round for a commercial once for like super chunky soup. it was like chunky but like extra chunky for like real yeah. men and like <laughs> dude it was so they're like you're gonna have to eat it if you get it and i was like mm -hmm. this is like the lamest fucking and i ended up not getting it like i guess I guess it would have been great if I got it, but I was I was dreading eating this like these giant chunks of can like it's really gross, dude. Yeah, it's a, a soup soup you can eat with a fork. Uh, not great, not great. Yeah, it's pretty Beefy, gross. Canned fucking. All right, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not a big soup guy in general, but I, I'm aware that we might need to to become soup people. Um, yeah, I'm eating shit I don't normally eat right now. Dude, we're cooking up a storm. We're yeah. cooking every night. Um, great. You know, are you guys cooking a lot or are you ordering yeah. delivery? We're cooking a lot, uh, except for like in some circumstances, we're not like preparing properly to cook the things we want to cook. So like, you know, we're waiting for meat to defrost and we're like, fuck it, and we order Chinese food. Uh -huh, yeah. You know, but I know, dude, you're a good cook though, man. Like, you know what you're doing. Yeah, I'm blessed that I was prepared for this in from a cooking standpoint. And also my girlfriend's a, a good cook. So we kind of take turns. And Awesome. Nice. It, you know, we're having different stuff every night. We had a, a really nice halibut the other night. You know, just just exploring the culinary horizons afforded us by all this free time. <laughs> dude, I challenge you to go hunting for your dinner, dude. That would be fun. I've seen some squirrels out there. They get they're getting bolder. What a wild it's turkey. Quiet. It's quiet in the woods, but it's not hunting season. I, here's a question: Should I buy a gun? Like maybe. I kind of want a, I kind of want a gun. You never know, man. If this shit starts to really go south, you might need one. I I, I wonder. I um, <laughs> it's times like this. I wish I were in Maine because I think it's pretty hard to buy a gun in Pennsylvania, especially with a New York State ID. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? But really, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't really know the gun laws. If you're listening out there, uh, friends and followers, please let us know how easily I can buy a gun if you've got one for sale I'll, I'll pay extra for it <laughs> i also need bullets <laughs> i like a gun all right here are some questions i have for you julio gallerati um the first question i have is how how far into a relationship do you think a couple would have to be in order to be in the clear to be in quarantine together? Oh, that's a good question. So what I mean is, you know, let's say that you're like, you've been dating for four weeks, right? You're still excited, you're having sex all the time, but you don't know a ton about each other. You haven't found out each other's skeletons in each other's closets. You don't know their disgusting habits. Everyone's still kind of putting on a, a nice face. And now all of a sudden, 
you're you're without your normal skincare routine. You're you only have two pairs of pants. You you're left to really spend constant time together. How do you survive it? And not only that, but if you decide that your quarantine mate is not someone you want to keep spending time with, how do you break up with someone in a quarantine? Right. This is a good, these are good questions. I think that, honestly, a new thing could be really fun during a quarantine. Because, you know, when you start dating somebody and, like, you are just having sex, like, every day and, yeah. it's, yeah. and, and you get to do that and also you kind of get to play house and stuff, it, it can be kind of fun. You know what I mean? I feel like almost the three month to the year mark is the most challenging quarantine time because you're like, not like you're still not comfortable, like using the bathroom with it when they're nearby. So you're just like holding it in and being awkward and like, you know what I mean? Whereas if you're past the year mark, you're more comfortable. And if it's like less than a year, I guess the bathroom thing would still apply, but at least like you're psyched to just be banging all the time and you get to like cuddle and fucking, you're not sick of spending time with each other. Potentially. Okay, so you think three months to a year is the hardest time to be quarantined together? Like three months to a year of dating, yes. Yeah, right. Interesting. Well, and, and I guess we can tackle the breakup next, but what do you think? Well, I think that two months in or a month and a half in is exciting for a few for like a week of quarantine, but that your fights are going to become insane. Really? Like even with an early relationship? Yeah, because you haven't figured out conflict resolution with each other. You don't know if someone responds more to uh, having space or to letting things breathe or, you know, any of these things. Like we're we're a year and a half into this relationship. So we're able to know each other's rhythm. Like we've had fights before and we know, you know, it's, it's not catastrophic. Like we're not going to right. DEF CON five. Um, Agreed. Yeah. Like some people will have their first fight during quarantine and that's going to be weird. Yeah. as fuck. Yeah. Agreed. And not yeah. only that, but yeah, all this, like, you know, people who are having sex three times a day during quarantine, you're going to, that's going to get old. You know? Yeah, no, definitely. You're going to wear that off more quickly. Well, dude, my girlfriend's in California and it's funny. Like, I'm happy she's with her family so her family can offer her emotional support, lifting that burden from my shoulders. Yes. (laughs) Not that it's a burden I don't want, but, you know, but also I now feel like I'm a fucking old, like an old fashioned naval guy at sea. Like Uh I'm in this long distance relationship all of a sudden. And I feel like every message, I'm like, my, my love, how I long for you. <laughs> As the <time. laughs> And it has, doesn't help I've been watching Game of Thrones. So now, like, I'm really feeling this kind of, like, old-fashioned situation. Yeah. You're, uh, are you, have you become more romantic as a result of this distance? Yeah, I do, like... It hasn't gotten to the point yet where it's where it's dire. Like I was away from her. I've been away from her for weeks at a time, and you know it makes me miss her. You know and want to see her, but I'm not like. And there are times where I'm like, oh, I wish she was here, but it's I'm fine for now. You know what I mean? Like she like you know this kind of stuff happens every once in a while. Not this particular thing, but sometimes you got to be away from your girl for a bit. You know, and it sucks. Sure. Yeah, I'm still figuring out how to. Uh, masturbate without her knowing (laughs) i was gonna ask that yeah because it's 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 pretty shameful to do it in the bathroom like in the nice sink and to use the luxury hand soap um and 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 i also prefer to be prone when i'm doing it uh but if she were to walk in on to be what to be i like to be prone i like to be lying down Prone. I've never. That's okay. I'm learning yeah. new vocab words. Prone. You know, is have you ever heard of the sex position prone bone? <laughs> it's it's doggy style, except she's lying flat on the bed. Oh yeah, it's a good position. That's a, that's one of my favorites. It's as if you stumbled upon her and she, you know, like you found her in a road somewhere, and you're like, like oh wow, 
you know. It's my lucky day. <laughs> yeah. I guess you were just waiting for me, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you continue, the logistic of jerking it. Prone bone is a big one. That's a big one. I've heard of that. Uh, people do that all the time. I didn't used to like prone bone. I used to like uh, the, 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 the knee, the full knee doggy style, but now I'm all about the prone bone. Dude, amen. Amen, brother. Yeah. all right so the point is the point is we're in her family's house and if she were to discover me you know jerking off somewhere i just feel like i don't think it would go that well agreed dude but but i don't know you should be using her that's right you using her sweetheart do you mind if i borrow you for a second i have some ejaculate that needs to go somewhere <laughs> God. oh good heavens oh, God. well we look you know what we we've been wanting to do is we've been wanting to set up uh like a board game or a game over skype or facetime with with another couple or some other people but i can't really figure out the logistics of it yeah, like you guys are already sick of playing games together. We're not sick of it, but I think it'd be fun to play like a four-player code names game or a Settlers of Catan or something like that, you know? Definitely. And there definitely will be like the quarantine horror movie that happens where like everyone's talking on Zoom or FaceTime or whatever and that's the whole movie. Yeah. You know, yeah. So- oh yeah. Yeah, dude, I can't help but wonder <laughs> how many how many fucking uh like movies and books are going to be based off of this, right? Bro, too, too many. I'm not doing shit. I'm not writing anything based on, I'm not doing anything, dude. It's funny. Every writer is going to write something. I agree. So you're, you're basically saying that uh, you're going to go against the curve by not creating during this time. I told myself that on Monday, I have a project that I'm working on that I haven't really gotten off the ground. I said, I'm going to wait till Monday. And okay. Thursday. You're giving yourself a whole a whole week of doing nothing. Yeah. That's pretty good, dude. I, I have to say, I've never wanted a day off more than I do right now. What do you mean? How crazy is that? I've never wanted to take a day off of work more than I do right now. Well, you're from because working remotely, right? I'm working remotely. I'm writing for you know Bro Bible. And uh there's a true like workday element of it. And I, I really struggle to work because I just feel like all I want to do right now is binge television and smoke weed and, you know, totally try to have, have prone bones with my girlfriend, but <laughs> you go build it, tables with the local Quakers. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> another funny, I keep, this is all these, there's so many funny things that I've noticed like a buddy of mine FaceTime yesterday and he had built himself a, a stand-up desk, you know, but he didn't like because he has one at work, and he's like one of those people who really cares about your. Oh yeah. Standing up, and he had he just put his laptop on top of like seven phone books. <laughs> he was like, dude, every day as I type, my desk wobbles precariously. <laughs> <laughs> that is fucking great, dude. Dude, my workouts. Are you working out? What are you doing? Well, dude, yeah, I have been. I've been. That's the thing I've been doing. I've been like. I was on, I was like trying to clean up my diet and stuff before this all started. So I've fully adhered to that. Like I've That's all, great. you know, trying to be like scientific about my diet mm-hmm. and working out every day. I have a, a gym here. Thank God. Um, oh, amazing. You have a you know. gym at the house. Well, it's, it's limited, but there's like full free weight set up. I bought a, I bought a bench that I assembled the other day Wow. Um, and treadmills and all that shit. So like, I've been just fully focusing on exercising and that, and, and having that be the only thing I think about. Mm-hmm. And then when that's over, I lather myself up in fucking in moisturizer and get in my pajamas immediately after. That's what I've been doing. <laughs> I took a bath yesterday, dog. Dude, I, I've been, I've taken two baths. Fire. Yeah. How nice is a bath? Amazing, dude. And there's some Epsom salts, fucking. Epsom salts. It makes your skin smooth underwater. I know, I know. Yeah. I feel, I, dude, I feel bad if like there's people listening to us who are like, "Fuck you guys," who have like a way worse setup. I, I, I don't want to sound like a prick sitting here being like, "My setup's great," because obviously it sucks for everybody, ultimately. 
Yeah, yeah. Look, don't don't get us wrong, guys. We we are fully aware of the drawbacks and the you know major uh, sacrifices that people have had to make because of this, and not for nothing. You know, all nine of my upcoming road dates have been either postponed or completely canceled, which accounts for like at least. 30% of my yearly income. Like, oh, yeah, you know, we're being a little, we're trying to make the best here by being a little bit flippant with our, our conversation. But having said that, there have been a couple times where I've looked at my girlfriend and I've said, you know, is this better? <laughs> Dude, yeah, right? I know. Like, is this, can I say that this is, this isn't bad, you know? As she lays prone in the fucking yeah. driveway. She's, she's out there waiting for me. No <laughs> idea that I'm coming. And, uh, you know, just, just ready. But, but, you know, not better, but th there are things that are nice. Like we, we've become a lot closer. The rhythms of life had quieted down. I've made a conscious effort to lower my daily screen time on my phone. Which is, um, which is already insanely low to begin with. Yeah, it's been it's pretty good, but but I'm really trying to get down, you know, down into the low two two hours uh, around there, and we are playing a lot of board games. It's just quieter. You start thinking more, you know. Dude, I will say this though: our bath yesterday, we took a partner bath, and it was supposed to be like this erotic thing. We lit some candles, we had some red wine, uh, and then we put bubbles in the bath, and the bubbles caused problems. They really did. It's, it's hard <laughs> to make out when you've got the taste of suds in your mouth. It's disgusting. <laughs> and I, I kept doing that thing where I was putting a, I made a beard with my bubbles. You know, I was like, hey, look at me. I'm an old man. I'm going to die of coronavirus. And, uh, Quaker. you know, and then I couldn't get the suds off because you try to reach for clean water and you just keep coming up with another handful of suds. And the bubbles were too much. It was not fun. Also, how do you even get to each other? Like, I don't know what kind of, like, they say this is you and this is her. Like, I'm not flexible enough to, like, lean all the way in. So I'd be like. Yeah, yeah. She she would come forward and sort of be leaning on top of me as I lean into the bath. But then there was this huge risk that she was going to knee me in the testicles because she couldn't see them given all the bubbles. And <laughs> the whole thing really kind of backfired on us, it, you know. <laughs> Be honest, I, I regret the bubbles. Yeah. <laughs> what what else is happening though? I mean, you know, I'm trying to think about things out there in the world that are uh, not related to all of this that people would be interested to hear about. Well, dude, I got a story. If this has, you know, this is a complete separate thing. This is in my. I was thinking about this yesterday. I was like, this is one of my favorite stories of my life, and it's very subtle. And so, this is the story. I was going to uh, Griffith Park in Los Angeles to shoot a Lil Young Big music video, okay? I, as I walk out the door with the guy who's shooting with me, this guy in his building pops his head out. He goes, hey, what are you guys doing? And we're like, oh, we're going to shoot a video. He goes, videos? He goes, oh, man, I love videos. He's like, you think I could come? And we're like, yeah, dude, sure, sure. So he comes, he's hanging out. It's like totally normal and fine. He like kind of starts being weird. He kind of starts talking to me. He's like, yo, I miss my son, man. We're like, okay. Like, I don't know this guy. My friend doesn't really know him either. He just lives in the building, right? So we finished the day shooting. We're all about to go home. And um, uh, my buddy's like, what are you doing, man? I'm like, oh, I got a show. Like, I want to try to like lose this guy. You know what I mean? And my friend's like, oh yeah, I got a date with a girl. And the guy goes, a date with a girl? He goes, oh man, I love girls. He's like, you think I could come? <laughs> And he's like, it's a, it's a date, man. It's just like me and her. Are you sure? He's like, it's fine. So then he went with them on the date. Okay. So whatever. Fast forward three weeks later, I shit you not. I'm going on this long bike ride from Silver Lake to Malibu. Bike and bike. And I'm like halfway there. And all of a sudden I hear, yo. And I look over my shoulder and it's the guy. And I was like, what's up, man? He's like, oh, nothing. Just, you know, going to work. I was like, oh, thank God, this, he's going to work. I was like, he's like, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I'm biking to Malibu. He goes, how? He goes, you know, I, it'll only take me a couple minutes to walk these dogs. You think I could come? And now I'm biking to Malibu with this fucking guy who I don't know, who just, 
Can you imagine? So now we're meeting up with my friends too. So now I just have to pretend he's my friend. So I'm like, oh, this is my boy. And then he starts acting crazy. He's like, yo, that dog. He's like, I'd be ashamed if that was my dog. My friends are like, dude. <laughs> I was like, just. And then we're about to we're about to leave to go home, and there was like no room in the car for his bike. Thank God, because they're like, you want to ride? And I was like, and then we try to get his car, his bike in the car. It doesn't fit in the car. And then he was like, whatever, man. And then biked home. So, all right, I have a lot of questions about this. <laughs> The first thing is, you guys must have wanted him to be around a little bit because nobody's that nice. You guys could have just said, like, we can't have you. You basically, exactly. you, did you put this dude on your bicycle to bike to Malibu? He was on a bicycle as well. He, he saw oh, me, okay. He saw me on a bicycle, flagged me down, and then somehow ended up coming on the fucking bike ride with me. Right insane dude huh unreal anyway i yeah it was fuck it, i just thought of that the other day and i was like that is a really sad story of like a person who just is like oh i think i, I you know what i'm happy to be going that same way yeah like, you know what I mean? that guy that guy doesn't have a whole lot of of real friends he's a day-to-day -day friend maker i don't know Whatever. he's like he's like the 51st dates of friendship I don't. I never saw that movie. You never saw that movie. Drew Barrymore has short-term memory loss, so every day she starts as if it's new. And Adam Sandler has to court her from the get-go every single morning. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, that's like Groundhog Day, which I just saw for the first time. Which I know I mentioned that, but it reminded me that in the beginning of that movie, Bill Murray is just blatantly sexually harassing Andy McDowell. Oh, totally, totally. And it's sort of like, it's sort of like completely normalized and fine. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a movie that was made in the, was it made in the early 90s or something? Yeah, and dude, that's yeah. not that long ago. Like, I was a lot, I was very alive. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, dude. So, anyway, listen, um, it's good to see your face, pal, I gotta say. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be checking in with each other and uh, bringing you plenty more episodes of Oops! The Podcast, everyone. But for now, um, you know, stay safe. And why don't you send us some of your stories of relationship quarantine? I'd love to hear about people out there who are with a significant other, especially a relatively new significant other, um, and how you're sort of navigating this learning process of each other when, you, when you're forced to be together. It's a little bit like that show, Naked and Afraid. Right, it's been true. been thrust into this very adverse environment and you're, you're forced to cope, so. Dude, that reminds me real quick. Yeah. Sorry, I heard a good one. Uh, these people, a girl that I know posted a story about her friends. They, got, they were about to start the process of getting divorced, but during that time, they ended up being quarantined together. Holy shit. Yeah. So now, like, they are just, like, they, they should be apart during this entirety of this time. But now they are just forced. I wonder, maybe it'll work out. Dude, you got to wonder if that's not a sign from God, you know? Damn. Wow. <laughs> I, I bet, I wonder if they're doing some prone boning. That's probably the only way that they're doing it, you know? <laughs> it's, just about, it's just about the least romantic sexual position you can have. Ah. Uh dude you can lean over and get a little makeout session during the program. i don't do that i don't do that i keep my mouth as far away as possible for you safety stare at yourself in the mirror yeah yeah i scorpion scorpion myself all What's right that? It, you know you're pushing your you're arching your back i try to keep myself praying mantis away from away from her nice dude <laughs> all right <laughs> terrible Hey, that's Oops the Podcast for today. Stay safe out there, everyone. Send us your uh, your quarantine stories and your relationship foibles to at Oops the Podcast. DM them to our account. Follow the Instagram. I don't have any fucking dates coming up. Pretty sure you don't either. Nope. <laughs> but as ever, you can follow him at not Julio with a J. I am at Francis C. C. Ellis. For now, this is Oops the Podcast. We'll see you soon.